Well, I opened my bookshop, and uh, already I had all these young Americans who were pouring into Paris from America, and they were disgusted in America because they couldn't get drink. It was prohibition, and they couldn't get Ulysses. I used to think those were the two causes of their discontent. <laughs> they were thoroughly frustrated. And, of course, Ulysses was the work that they were all, uh, they admired the most. And I think how annoying not to be able to get it anymore. And it was being su suppressed in a review called The Little Review. And two women there, it was always women who were publishing Joyce, and they were trying to publish this thing, and it was suppressed. And finally their review was suppressed, and they were hauled off to prison for it. Well, suddenly, All on account of Joyce. <laughs> suddenly you, uh, uh, from being a, a bookseller, a very famous bookseller, you suddenly decided to go into publishing. Yes. You see, I met Joyce one day at a party, a party that I wasn't supposed to attend at all as I wasn't invited. But Adrienne Monet took me, and uh, it was the house of a French poet named André Speer, who was a friend of Ezra Pound's. And Ezra Pound had just lured Joyce and his family to Paris, and uh, he had, uh, had him invited to this party, and so uh, we were really, both of us, uninvited. And when I got there, the host, uh, André Speer, whispered in my ear, the, f the Irish writer James Joyce is here. So you see, he must have known already the importance of James Joyce. And uh, I was f so frightened, so scared, and I, I imagined Joyce up in the clouds somewhere with the gods, you see. I never thought I could meet him in the flesh, and it seemed terribly frightening. And I thought at first I would run home, but I didn't. I stayed. And I met Joyce, and Mrs. Joyce was there. I met Nora Joyce and liked her very much. And uh, Joyce was sitting at table, and uh, Ezra Pound was teasing him with putting all the wine bottles and all the glasses in front of his place, and he wasn't drinking a drop. And this was because he had vowed not to drink until night time. But Ezra knew this. Nobody else could understand the point of that joke. And after lunch, when they were discussing all kinds of problems in French writing, I uh, went into a room off the dining room where André Speer had a lot of books piled up. It was his little library. And leaning in the corner against the bookshelves was James Joyce, drooping. And uh, I went up to him boldly and spoke to him, and uh, we had a conversation together. And he seemed very much interested in my bookshop. He said, what do you do? And I said, uh, I have a bookshop. Oh, what have you? Give me the address. And I told him, it's Shakespeare and Company, and it's 8 Rue du Puitrain, Paris 6. And he took this all down, peering very close at it, because he was his eyes were not good. And I was very much impressed with Joyce. I thought I'd never seen anyone so interesting and so fine. He seemed very sensitive, terribly, and very, very interesting. And some people t asked me, were you disappointed when you met James Joyce? And uh, I always say, never at all, for he was anything but disappointing. And then he brought along the manuscript, the typescript of Ulysses to you. Yes. Well, I, he used to tell me about what was going on mm. in New York, and he was following this case where the uh, Ulysses was being suppressed, and finally he came one day to show me this little review, and he said, you see, this is now being completely suppressed, and my book, as he pronounced it, will never come out. So he sat there with his head in his hands, and uh, I uh, said to him, would you like me to publish Ulysses? And he said, I would. <laughs> he was very, seemed very much relieved, in fact. Why, I don't know, because it wouldn't inspire confidence in anyone who had such a book that he'd taken seven years to write, to give it to the, into the hands of someone so inexperienced and young and uh, just a kind of a little bookshop, not a publishing house at all.